This is a piece of the Alatai meteorite. It's one of the largest meteorites to ever land on Earth, and while it doesn't look like much from the outside, I think you'll be pretty impressed by what it has to show on the inside. All the things you see on the screen here are samples of the Alatai meteorite in different forms, cut into different shapes, and etched to show the unique patterns within it. Now, this meteorite was discovered in China around 1898. It landed a lot earlier than that, but because it's primarily iron and nickel, it survived for quite a long time. So far, over 75 tons of this meteorite have been recovered. It's quite a large amount, and generally speaking, we probably believe that the meteorite came into our atmosphere and at some point broke up and spread across what ended up being a pretty large strewn field. We're talking somewhere along the lines of 400 to 500 kilometers in area where pieces of this meteorite have been found. It's kind of interesting, back in the early days when people were finding it, they thought they were all fragments of different meteorites because they were found so far apart. But it turns out, after doing chemical analysis, they're all related to the exact same meteorite fall, which was probably quite a show if anyone was around to see it. I have a few different forms of Alatai shown here for you. Of course, there are a couple of end cuts. One of those is kind of in its raw state. The other is coated in epoxy. One of the reasons you'll see that is because this meteorite is iron and nickel, and it will rust when exposed to humidity and oxygen. So the coating can prevent that rust from happening. Otherwise, we do treat these meteorite samples every now and then to remove rust and preserve them so they're here and available to us to study and enjoy for a long time. I personally really love the contrast between the smaller whole stone fragment you see here and the larger uh, cutout cube that we have. Uh, it turns out because the Vindmanstaten pattern on this Alatai meteorite is so gorgeous that these get used to be made into jewelry a lot, little pendants or rings or things like that. That Vindmanstaten pattern happens because the iron nickel meteorite has two different alloys in it, canicide and tannite, and when you etch that by pouring acid on it, it causes them to kind of uh, wear away at different rates, which makes the different lines visible. We're essentially looking at iron nickel crystals because this material was molten at some point and cooled slowly over time. Because of its abundance and these cool patterns that display when you cut into the meteorite, it is very common. It's used, again, a lot in jewelry. Lots of collectors have it. It is also a starting piece that a lot of people start with when they begin their collection of meteorites. Speaking of starting a meteorite collection, if you're interested in starting one of your own, adding something to your collection, or maybe you're an educator looking for something that you can share with your class, make sure to check what I've got available on the TikTok shop or on my website at midnightmeteorites.com. There's lots of different things accessible at lots of different price points. We use special discounts for teachers and educators. I really want to make sure you know that space is within your reach.